This was a really big mess up. We should have done this one during early entry. This was a super big mess up. My name is Trevin, and I made a video where I rode every ride at Disneyland in one day. Next ride, Alice in Wonderland, let's go. Yes, it's a walk-on. Oh, dude, this is perfect. This is actually so perfect. If you haven't seen it yet, you can click here to watch it. This video is going to be an analysis of the strategy that I use when riding every ride. If you want to attempt a Disneyland speedrun, this video is going to be very valuable for you. But without further ado, here is the edited down live stream of my reaction to my Disneyland speedrun. Enjoy! We're gonna start from the top. We're just gonna watch this whole video. <laughs> Today I'm gonna attempt to ride every single ride at Disneyland as fast as humanly possible. The timer has officially okay, started. Okay, so We're already, 7.30 a.m. We got into the park at 7.30 a.m. And the way we did this is we paid for a one night at the uh, Pixar Place Hotel. And it gave us early entry, which is basically you get let into the park 30 minutes before they open it for the rest of the people. My strategy for early entry was kind of crazy. They give you two lands that are open for early entry. You get Tomorrowland and you get Fantasyland. Tomorrowland... You shouldn't do that land because you can do all those rides with lightning lane for the most part. It's not worth doing that land in, during early entry. The best thing you should do is go to Fantasyland because Fantasyland has so many small rides that are so close to each other and that don't take that long to get on and off of. You should be knocking out those rides when they're wide open, when there's like literally no one there. And that's exactly what we're about to do. We're heading That's straight to Peter started. Pan. We're heading straight to Peter Pan. Straight to Peter Pan. We're making it on. So we're in line. It's a minute and 49 seconds in. As you can kind of see, there's like a bit of a crowd, which you may be like wondering like, well, what the heck was that about? It looks like there's no one ahead of you right here. Like how was there a whole crowd formed? And that's because I quite honestly didn't do enough research. What happened was there was a giant group of people that were like kind of next to the castle that they were let into the park at the same time as us, but because they were closer, they got to Peter Pan a little bit earlier. I did some research. It's apparently Adventures by Disney. If you pay like $5,000, you can do a guided tour. All I know is that generally on Wednesdays, they are at Disneyland and they get to be a little bit closer to rope drop than us. It was only a little bit upsetting because it meant that we had to wait about five minutes for Peter the Pan. Timer we totally could have fit in an extra ride here. I think, with the five minutes that it took us to get 50 seconds. So yeah, Peter Pan took me about seven minutes to do. It would have probably taken more like three minutes to do. It's just the fact that there was a giant crowd there. Every other ride is going to be wide open in Fantasyland. Everyone only wants to go on Peter Pan. So if you're at the front, you should also try to rush for Peter Pan. If you're not at the front, honestly, just skip it. It's not worth it. But of course, we were at the front. We rushed to it. There was a crowd kind of ahead of us, but we still got on in like a pretty good amount of time. Five minutes is not bad at all, like ever. All it meant was that in my head, I was thinking it's probably not possible to do six rides in, in this amount of time because I didn't entirely know if six rides was possible. It was just something that I was very optimistic on. Get ready to keep going. We're six minutes in. Next ride, Alice in Wonderland. Let's go. Okay, we're going to Alice in Wonderland next. This may seem like a weird move, and honestly, it is a weird move. I probably should not have done this, but my thought process was that Alice in Wonderland is like the second busiest ride in Fantasyland, so I figured that there would be like a lot of people there that would go there later during early entry. But what I didn't really realize to the fullest extent is that there, there's no one in line. There's no one in line for any of these rides. I go. kid you not. Yes, it's a walk on. I was absolutely flabbergasted to see this. There's no one in line there. Literally not a single soul is in line. When I turned that corner and saw that, I was actually kind of freaking out because I figured maybe there'd be like five or 10 people in line. We'd have to wait like a minute or two to get on this. But we were, we walked on this thing. It took like less than a minute to travel between these two rides. Seven minutes, 25 seconds is when we stepped out of the exit queue of Peter Pan. Seven minutes and 57 seconds is when we stepped into the entrance queue of Alice in Wonderland. It took us four minutes to go through that ride. I was, I was so excited at this point because this is when I realized, oh my god, it is totally possible to do six rides in this amount of time. Oh, dude, this is perfect. This is actually so perfect. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Exactly Every what I was hoping for. walk on. We're I was so Dumbo excited. Right it's crazy. Let's wait in like, line. We were probably the only people there who were like 20-year-olds running around the park. Like, everyone else is like families who are like, oh, let's go on the Dumbo ride. And I'm over here with like a GoPro strap to my chest running around. <laughs> Anyways, we're getting on Dumbo now. Uh, Dumbo is a really bad 
ride in the afternoon, you probably are going to be looking at like a 45 minute wait. The reason for that is because the rotation of it. There's going to be certain rides that the only way to wait for the ride, I guess, is uh, you have to wait for the ride to do its complete rotation. So for Dumbo, the ride is like the ride spinning around and the people on the ride. If you show up and the ride is still operational, then you have to wait for those people to be done with the ride before you can get on the ride. Basically, the best way to like minimize the amount of uh, rotation waits is to get in line right as you see the rotation ending. Right as you see like those Dumbo elephants going down, that's when you get in line because that's when you're like, okay, I'm not going to have to wait for a rotation. I can just walk on this one. In the heat of the moment, I just got in line when it was mid-rotation. I think I said something like, we can just get on this one right now. Uh, this was still a good move. I'm not I'm not like criticizing myself. I, I think it's very possible to do eight rides during early entry in Fantasyland. And I think the way to do that is to really crack down on this uh, rotation idea that I have where you are getting in line right as it is ending. Because you don't have to wait at all for like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride or like Alice in Wonderland. There's always going to be a vehicle that shows up that you could just hop in and you don't have to wait at all. It was still really good that we were getting on this ride, and um, yeah. We're doing Toad next, and it looks like it's a walk-on. Mr. Toad, we literally walked in line. I think I did the math. This is like the fastest it's ever taken me to actually get through a ride at Disneyland. We're looking at like not even three minutes right here. It took 16 minutes, 36 seconds, all the way to 19 minutes, 13 seconds. We didn't wait at all for Mr. Toad's. Uh, as you can see, there's no wait here. It <laughs> The thing is, with these rides, like, you would have to wait, like, 20 minutes each for these rides in the afternoon. At the very least, like, 20 minutes each. And we're just, we're just walking on them. Alright, alright, alright. Snow White is next. Where do we enter? Snow is White. Is it here? Actually, Snow White took a bite of the apple. Okay, so okay, Snow no, White no, broke down on us. But, that's okay, because I just went on to the next ride. It was, this was a really good save. I just said, we're... I literally said, never mind, we're not doing Snow White, we're doing Pinocchio. Yep, Snow White broke down. That's okay, that's okay. We just need to replace it with either the carousel or the teacups. So, basically what I'm saying right now is that, like, I know we're still gonna have enough time to do six rides, but since one of the rides that I wanted to do was broken down, I was like, okay, we need to have a backup ride that we're gonna do instead. Uh, so I said, okay, the carousel or the teacups, those were the only two other in the immediate area that were open. I decided to go with teacups, which in my opinion is not the right move, but we'll we'll get into that in a second. Fifth ride of the day. Fifth ride of the day. Yeah, okay, Snow White's is still closed. We have seven minutes to do this. So we have seven minutes. It's 7.53 right now, and we have seven minutes to do one more ride. Teacups, and then we can hit regular rope drop. And then we can hit regular rope drop. We want to be able to maximize the fact that there's a whole other area of the park that hasn't opened, that like has no guests in it yet. And we wanna basically join in to that rope drop. I decided to go with teacups. In hindsight, I shouldn't have done this. I should have just done the carousel. And we'll get into why when we actually get into the part where I where I actually ride the carousel. Really big thing that I wanted to mention really quickly though, as far as ride trade-offs go, this is a, a concept that I kind of thought of is like, you want to think of like, what's the trade-off of going on a certain ride versus a different ride? Sure, maybe you can see that there's no wait for the teacups right now, and you can maybe think we just got to get on teacups right now. But next to teacups, maybe there's the carousel, and there's no wait for that one right now. You should get on the one that is going to take the most amount of time in the afternoon. I say that just to kind of emphasize like, during this run, we did not really think about ride trade-offs as much as we should have and it kind of caused the run to suffer a little bit. Okay, rope drop is happening right now. The rest of the park is now opening. Okay, whoa, what is going so on right now? One of the per We're heading straight to the area that wasn't open for anyone so that we can quickly hop on Jungle Cruise and Indiana Jones. Before. So this is what I was just explaining. We want to maximize the fact that we have another rope drop that we can go to. Um, and that's why I left Fantasyland. Quite honestly, I don't think I should have left Fantasyland. I think I should have stayed in Fantasyland. There were a couple rides that we could have done that weren't open during early entry that would have been pretty beneficial to have done. I think my logic here was really solid though because I was basically saying like we need to get on Jungle Cruise which is a ride that uh, doesn't have lightning lane, can be kind of a bit of a wait uh, later in the afternoon. Then we can use a lightning lane for Indiana Jones. It's still morning, so th there's not going to be many people using lightning lane. So we could basically just walk on Indiana Jones. And I think that that's, it's a really solid plan to basically like just get Adventureland over with. In my opinion, we shouldn't have left Fantasyland. I think if I did redo a speed run, I would consider not leaving Fantasyland. I would consider probably just going to Toontown or 
doing something in that area because those are the areas that get crowded in the morning. The issue with Jungle Cruise is that it is kind of a long ride. It takes maybe like, I don't know, 10-ish minutes to get through, maybe like more like eight minutes to get through. Ride trade-offs, is it better to go on longer rides in the morning or the afternoon? You could just go on them in the afternoon when you already have to wait for other stuff. This is Disneyland Speed Run. Guys, Indiana Jones broke down. Run. I just got a notification. I'm so glad that it happened now and not while we were Indiana on Jones it. You know what I mean? Down, and that was kind of insane. Indiana Jones always breaks down, but it broke down and, you know, that was kind of annoying. But all it really meant is that we now have a multi-experience pass that we can use on Indiana Jones uh, later whenever we, we can basically go on Indiana Jones whenever we want. And that's very important. When we do get to Indiana, Indiana Jones, I'll explain why that's really important. Indy is still closed. Let me just double, double, triple check. Yeah, no, it's still so closed. So it was still closed. If it was open, I probably would have, like, tried to get on it. Okay, it we're going this way. We're going to go on Astro Orbiter. So and then I already had kind of a pretty predetermined path of what we wanted to do. I knew that we needed to hit Astro Orbiter because Astro Orbiter has, like, pretty bad rotation times, and it can get up to, like, 45 minutes in the afternoon. Similar to, to Dumbo. It's basically, like, a copy and paste of Dumbo. Really good that we got on this right now. We didn't even have to wait that. It didn't take us that long to get through Astro Orbiter. It took us, like... Less than 10 minutes, yeah. We, we we were on and off that thing pretty quickly. So it looks like Roger Rabbit is closed right now, but that's... So I talk about Roger Rabbit just super quickly because there was a predetermined lightning lane path that I knew I wanted to take. Indiana Jones was the first and then Space Mountain was the second. Roger Rabbit was the third. Those three lightning lanes specifically were the ones that I wanted to get through because the return times went out super quickly for them or they would go out pretty quickly. And if we waited too long to book for them, we would be out of luck to even be able to use Lightning Lane on them. You're only allowed to get another Lightning Lane either after you've used your current Lightning Lane or if it's been two hours since you've booked that Lightning Lane. So naturally. So what I explained there just super quickly is that if you wait two hours after you book the Lightning Lane, you can book another one, but you could do it faster if you just use up the current Lightning Lane. I say we're trying to Lightning Lane hop. I used Inspect Element on this. I say the action of using lightning lanes in a quick succession, usually in the morning, faster than two hours at a time to avoid the genie plus two hour rule. <laughs> this is just a term that I made up, it's stupid. But um, <laughs> quite honestly, this strategy sucks. And I'm gonna tell you why right now. When you get to the afternoon, what are you leaving yourself with? You're not leaving yourself with a whole lot of lightning lane rides, that's for sure. You're leaving yourself with a lot of standby rides that you could have been doing in the morning when there was no one in line for them. I should have done a little bit more stacking instead of uh, hopping, but, and also I should have done more single rider. This ride literally has single rider and I didn't use it. Casey Jr., Snow White, Chippendale. So, okay, I just threw out three rides. We did those in that specific order. This is again where I, like, I'm watching this now and I'm like, why the hell did I do that? Like, I walked across the entire park to, to get to Casey Jr. And I wanted to do Snow White because we couldn't do Snow White during early entry. And then Chippendale, which is uh, Chippendale's Gadget Go, Go Coaster. There were specific rides, especially in Fantasyland, that I knew we should probably hit in the morning as opposed to the afternoon because it was going to be really difficult trying to get on them in the afternoon. Those rides, if I can remember right, were like Casey Jr., the storybook, Canal Boats. There was also like Finding Nemo. Winnie the Pooh was one that was a little bit on the right. It's it's all these rides that don't have Lightning Lane that are the ones that are, are problems because it's like, you can't skip them. There's no way to skip them. You just have to go in the regular standby for them. Because I was so focused on getting these specific rides done and hopping around the park to do certain rides in the morning, it meant that there was a lot of walking time. That's one area where I think we really, really messed up. A multi-experience pass is a blank lightning okay, lane I'll just let myself pass that this. Disney will give you if you get evacuated off of a ride, or as for our case, if a ride is broken down during your lightning lane return time. You can use this pass any time of the day on whatever ride it allows you to. And what's most important about this pass is that you can use it on rides that don't have lightning lane. So you can basically just skip the- So as of now, you actually can't do that anymore. And I made this discovery, but when I filmed this video, you could use them on rides that don't have lightning lane. So I was honestly, I was hoping for this to happen. I was hoping that we would get a multi-experience pass. So I was really excited when we did get one because like I said, there's like a handful of rides that I knew we were going to have to do in the afternoon that were going to be really difficult to get through. Finding Nemo was one of them. And I wanted to be able to get through that ride without having to wait a long time. So I already kind of knew that we were going to use this one on Finding Nemo. The more multi-experience passes, though, the better. And there was an opportunity for us to get another multi-experience pass later in this video. 
we'll we'll talk the about that in a second. Line once we of get a ride there. that we're stuck. No, this is a time loss. <laughs> it's staying a five minute wait for Snow White. This is a time loss. That's such a good joke. It's like one of the best jokes I have in this entire video. Sorry, I'm like laughing at my own joke, but like I thought that was really funny. I think we could do this in like under eight hours, under seven hours. So who knows? Okay. Technically, I was so confident. I was so freaking confident at this point. I was like, dude, we're gonna do this like way faster than I thought. And that wasn't me like playing it up for the camera. I genuinely believed that because in my mind, I'm like, okay, we're getting on these rides that I know would have been really difficult to get on in the afternoon and we're like flying through them. We're already 11 rides in. The park has only been open for like not even two hours. So I was like, we're doing so freaking good. And I think I just figured that this pace would keep up for like the rest of the day. But as we find out, that pace does not keep up for the rest of the day. All right, it's gadget time. The okay, gadget go coaster is this ride kind of sucks. I don't know what the heck happened. I don't think it used to be like this before they rethemed it to Chip and Dale's Gadget Go Coaster. Maybe it was always like this, but this ride for some freaking reason is like 45 minutes usually in the afternoon. This was another one that I was like, we need to do this in the morning. We waited like 20 minutes for this ride. Hold up. Let me, we waited more, maybe more like 15 minutes, but we still, it, it took us like about 20 minutes to get through this ride. I felt it when we were waiting in this ride it, for this line. I was like, we shouldn't be waiting right now. Like it's morning. We should be going on ride. We have like a million more rides to do today. <laughs> We, we were too late to this ride is basically what I'm saying. I think this probably should have been one that we had done during rope drop. Instead of doing Jungle Cruise, we should have done this. The only way that you can get a speed run record is if you get a multi-experience pass for Chippendales. Yeah, which you can't even do anymore. <laughs> There's 72 horses on that thing. So we can get on that one pretty quickly. I'll admit, I totally underestimated how long it was gonna take to make sure that all 72 people were strapped into their horses. Okay, the carousel. This was a really big mess up. We should have done this one during early entry. This was a super big mess up. I figured that, okay, you've got 72 horses. That's 72 people you can cycle through in one cycle. That's pretty decent. That's definitely more people than the teacups. So that's why I did the teacups instead of the carousel. But what I didn't realize is that, and I really should have... I really should have remembered this. The load on, load off time is what I call it. It's basically the time that it takes uh, between rotations. You know, like they have to make sure that everyone's secured on the ride and strapped in so no one's like flying off. Because you have 72 different vehicles that people can get on, that's like 72 people that you have to make sure are like strapped into their individual horses. That's going to take a while to make sure, like, it's they're going to be walking around the horse for, like, five minutes figuring that out. That that was just something that I completely missed the mark on. I thought I was being really clever here because I was like, guys, there are 72 horses, so we can get on this one quickly because we'll get on the rotation quickly. But no, it doesn't matter because it's the freaking load on, load off time that I really screwed up on. This was still at least good because I was squeezing this ride in uh, between uh, doing Big Thunder Mountain because Big Thunder Mountain is the next ride we go on. Um, and I did that because I was waiting for it to be our return time for Big Thunder Mountain. So that it was still good in that sense. I was hoping to do two rides in this amount of time. I was hoping to do this and the Main Street Vehicles. That didn't happen because it just took so long. 15 minutes, dude. Like, I was thinking it would maybe take like five minutes because the wait time was five minutes. So I figured it would probably, if we just get on the rotation, it shouldn't take that long. So I don't know. There's a lot of things that you have to account for with this. It's, it's difficult. But hey, you know what isn't difficult? Enjoying the smells of Disneyland, which you can do with my discount code for the Magic Candle Company. Click the first link in the description and then use code SPEEDRUN at checkout to get 15% off your entire order. Our next ride is listed on the Disneyland Attractions page as Main Street Vehicles, which encompasses a few different methods of transportation on Main Street. But since it's only listed as one attraction on the website, we only need to pick one of them to ride. So yeah, we did the Main Street Vehicles. I did them in the morning. I probably would have just held off to do them like later, like later, later into the speed run because I knew that it's usually a walk on at all times, but we did it at this point because I knew that we were gonna start looping around the rest of the park and we were gonna kind of go away from that front area. This ride closes at 2.15 PM or usually it does. I think they've actually been keeping it open a little bit later recently, but on this day, it was gonna close at 2.15 PM. So I wanted to make sure that we got on it before that. But note to self and note to anyone else who decides to do a Disneyland speed run, do not freaking go on the horse because look. I see which one we're doing, the horse. I, we went on the horse drawn carriage uh, because it was the first one that I saw. But for whatever reason, I, I probably because you're working with a live horse, it just, it, 
took so long to like actually get this freaking ride going I, I didn't really show it in the editing like i just started i just started with us going but it took like 10 minutes to get through this it should not have taken us 10 minutes five minutes of that was just us like sitting in place waiting i literally saw like one of the vehicles pull up nearby and then like go away with with guests like it, it pulled up and then it pulled away and i was like dude we could have just gone on that one like what <laughs> while we were walking to haunted mansion we walked past pirates of the caribbean the line that i saw for that ride it went way out it went like all the way out to where the beginning of haunted mansion is what i've learned since is that um usually it does this it still loads on pretty quickly i was still concerned just seeing that long line and i was avoiding that ride at all costs at this point i i had just kind of assumed like all right we're just pushing pirates of the caribbean off to the afternoon star wars land and we just kind of so yeah we're going on uh winnie the pooh now we're doing it because we're waiting for our return time for splash mountain so this was a good move we did not wait long for this ride at all right, this is gonna be our last time going on splash mountain how does that make you feel yeah i was kind of thinking that this ride was going to be a lot more crowded th this day but it wasn't really that bad this video was filmed like 20 days before Splash Mountain closed at Disneyland. So I kind of thought that there'd be a lot of people there. But no, it was it was just like any other day. We probably could have saved this one for the afternoon, especially because it does have single rider. But it, it's all right. It, it kind of just made sense to do this ride at this point because we were in the area. Oh, I'm that, good. That I didn't get wet. Let's so, go. Hold on. We got to look at that picture. That is, that is an amazing picture, just like me, absolutely scared, holding onto my phone for dear life, and then Jeffrey just like, looking off in the distance, it was, it was goofy. So while Jeffrey goes to grab our lunch, I'm gonna do ride number 20 on my own, which is the Davy Crockett canoes. I like mobile ordered while we were in line for Splash Mountain, I was like, alright Jeffrey, go pick it up, and just like, have the lunch prepared for us. I'm gonna go do this ride. Gotta put it in the work for this one. And I was expecting this ride to take longer. Quite honestly, this ride, the duration time depends on like how fast everyone is in your canoe. It took us like less than 20 minutes to get through this entire ride. We also got pretty lucky because uh, it was just me going on it and they were looking for a party of one to like skip the rotation and go on to the current rotation. So that was pretty awesome. We headed to a galaxy far, far away to do the two rides in that land. So would it technically be faster so, to- So, all right, right here, we're going on Millennium Falcon, which may seem weird because we could have just done Rise of the Resistance. It's closer to us. Uh, but the reason we did that is because we're trying to use up a lightning lane so that we can book for another one, which quite honestly, it's afternoon now. I shouldn't be freaking worried about that. I was still operating with the mindset that we should be like lightning lane hopping. I shouldn't have been doing that. The rides that we had left with lightning lane, we don't have to worry about those return times. This whole strategy was very revolving around the fact that we were using lightning lane a lot, and I kind of hate that. It's very easy to get deceived by like, oh, we should just be doing every single lightning lane ride right now. Also with Millennium Falcon, I should have done single rider because as Coast discovered when he did his Disneyland speed run, you could do single rider and basically walk on the ride because you don't have to wait through the pre-show. A Falcon single rider was clutch. Yeah, no, and single rider is clutch in general. The expectation is that we can just walk on right this is probably gonna i think it took us like 25 minutes to wait for this ride maybe longer let me check rise of the resistance was 515 to 551 oh that's so much worse than i remember we had to wait a while for this ride and especially for having to pay for lightning lane for this ride individually i was kind of annoyed by that but it was like this ride and mickey and minnie's runaway railway that i wasn't super worried about because the fact that they are individual lightning lane rides means that the return times aren't going out super fast because less people are booking for it because you have to pay for it i just chose a really bad time to go on this ride like right after lunch is not a good time to go on this ride i think if we wait any longer for indiana jones it will be a bad idea so i think we we should try to do that one next. This right here was the biggest mistake of the speed run. We got a multi-experience pass for um, Indiana Jones when it broke down uh, right in the morning. We were planning on doing it in the morning, but we couldn't do it because it broke down. The fact that we had that multi-experience pass meant that we could use it at any time of the day. It just meant that we had to we had to pick the right time to go on Indiana Jones. And I decided to go on it at this specific time because I was like, I don't want to have to worry about Indiana Jones later because I know that that ride breaks down and it'll break down for a while. I don't want it to break down 
and us have like two more rides left and then like we don't get to go on it. I should not have done that. That was really stupid of me to do that. Earlier, when we were in line for Millennium Falcon, I decided that after Rise, we would go on the Disneyland Railroad and do a full loop of it since it was only a 10 minute wait for the railroad at the time, which is really freaking good for the Disneyland Railroad. Think about the trade-off here. You're looking at a ride that you could use Lightning Lane on it anytime you want, or you're looking at a ride that right now is a 10 minute wait and is usually like a 30 minute wait. Knowing the, the data of it, you know that ride is gonna become a pretty higher wait later in the day, but right now it's safe to go on. Which one should you go on? Yeah, that's right. You should go on the freaking Disneyland Railroad. You should not be going on Indiana Jones. This was such a stupid move and I still think about this all the time. If we had not gone on Indiana Jones at this point, we probably could have gotten like a sub 10 hour run. The reason why is that there's a, there's a few different reasons. One, because I mean, what what's about to happen? The ride freaking broke down and we couldn't have predicted that. But yes, the ride did break down and it really screwed us up. Two, we could have done the railroad instead. And when we get to the railroad, you'll see how long it takes us to get through the railroad. It was not pretty. We waited like 25 minutes to get on the freaking railroad. We could have saved like quite a bit of time if we had just gotten on the railroad at this time instead. I knew that the railroad was going to be an issue in the like late afternoon and that it probably would be best to do it in that sweet spot between morning and afternoon. The third reason why this sucked so bad is because we had a lightning lane booked for Buzz Lightyear. We were gonna do that after we went on this ride. But because it broke down and just with the return time that we had, I figured that we probably weren't going to make the return time. So I, I canceled that and I booked for Autopia instead. Five minutes after I made that move of canceling that lightning lane and booking for a different lightning lane. Buzz Lightyear broke down, which means that if I had kept that lightning lane, we would have gotten another multi-experience pass. And it probably would have saved us like a good 25 minutes. <laughs> and I still think about this a lot. Like it's, it literally was just, it was just this, it was Indiana Jones. Like, yes, we messed up a lot in the morning, but like this was the big part where if I'm looking for like a sub 11 hour run, if I'm looking for a run of like, around the 10 hour mark, we could have gotten there if we just didn't go on freaking Indiana Jones at this point. But I swear to God, if the ride breaks down on us, I'm going to cry. Oh no. Of course Something's I Something's going on. We don't really have a choice that we need to stay in line. That was the other part that was so frustrating about this that I knew was that they weren't going to give us a multi-experience pass. They don't usually give out multi-experience passes for people who are like waiting in line for a ride and then it breaks down. It's usually like if you get evacuated off of it or if you have a lightning lane booked for that return time. That's the only two times that they really give you a multi-experience pass. So I knew like at this point, I was like, we literally just need to wait here and just wait for this freaking ride to reopen. Because if we don't, then we're wasting a multi-experience pass. And we waited 30 freaking five minutes just waiting, just like waiting around. That's why it took us like 50 minutes, 51 minutes to get through that ride. So frustrating. We headed back to Tomorrowland to finish what we started during the peak of the afternoon. The absolute worst time to be at Disneyland. There's like a- So th this is when it was really sinking in that I was like, oh crap, things are getting really bad right now. Look at this. Look at this crap right here. You can see it on screen. This lane is wide open. There's no one here. But then the, of course the lane that I'm in has a crazy pile up of cars. Like what the hell is this? I was so annoyed at that. <laughs> here we are stuck. Waiting for Indiana Jones for like 40 minutes. We tried to make this it up by going on this ride ranting. and it's like so the upset. person in- Every other lane was going by super fast. And honestly, it didn't really make that big of a difference because you still have to wait in this crazy traffic jam at the end of the ride anyways. So it didn't really, I don't really think it caused that big of a difference, but it was just annoying. Honestly, Disneyland, can you please, I know you want to so badly, tear this entire ride down, put Frozen Land here, I don't even care anymore. Put anything there, Disney, put anything there. I don't care what it is, just put anything other than Autopia, please, oh my God. We need to go on Storybook right now, it's only 15 minutes. We have Okay, I just made the fatal mistake right there. I said, it's only 15 minutes, we need to go on Storybook. That is a fatal mistake. Do not fall for this trick. Usually Storybook at this time is maybe like 30 minutes long. It's usually like a 30 minute wait. If you see a ride that has like a low wait time and you are like, let me go chase after it because I want to get in line while it's a low wait and you're not literally like right next to it, don't do it because everyone else has already done it. Now the line's like a long wait. When we got on the ride, 
took us like 25 minutes. If being yeah, behind so schedule again, were a sport, we like were being awarded the more. first. We still have Pirates, Nemo, Small World, the Mark Twain Riverboat, and the Disneyland Railroad, which all take at least 15 minutes to ride each. I saved all of the long rides for the afternoon, and I did that intentionally because I didn't want to do them in the freaking morning, but it was just kind of painful knowing that because I was like, okay, we only got nine more rides. We, we've done 25 rides so far. Nine rides should be like nothing, but because of the fact that it was all the long rides that it was just like, oh my god, we have to get through the freaking small world and then go on the Mark Twain Riverboat. Right, also, yeah. also, also, you can kind of see this uh, just in the footage that I have. People are lined up for the freaking parade. Railroad, like, they're watching the parade go by. We chose the worst time to, like walk between the the lands with these two reds they didn't take that long buzz Lightyear and star tours you're looking at like 15 minutes each to get through them that's not that bad especially for the afternoon star tours takes a bit to get through so it was actually really good that we we got on these rides and off of them pretty quickly. We used Lightning Lane, obviously. The load on load off time for them was not that bad. We used the multi experience pass that we got okay. earlier right. from Roger Rabbit on none other than Finding Nemo's Submarine Voyage. Delights this on this ride. ride, such as waiting 10 minutes to be boarded on the submarine after it's arrived. Be that was just bad RNG. Terrible RNG. I'm sorry. I just, I gotta say it. Terrible luck. <laughs> we used a multi-experience pass for, the ride, for that ride and we still had to wait like 10 minutes for it. We were so tired. Even just watching this, I'm like, it's draining me just thinking about it. It was very cramped, very claustrophobic, very uh, energy drained and just hungry and tired. And that's why we got dinner after this. At least you'll get ever since I was a kid. Did this is proof right here that I've wanted to do this ever since I was a kid. Because look at me, I'm just holding a freaking map out here. I don't know how old I am in this picture. I've always been this kid who's just like, I want to do every ride at Disneyland, but I just didn't know if it was possible. But hey, it's possible, and I did it. The plan is simple. Nine hours, we head up to the monorail, in. do a full loop, then we go to Small World, then we finally get to do Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway for the first time ever, then hop on the train and do a full loop around the park, and then finally head back to the left side of the park to do the final two rides that we need to do, Pirates and the Mark Twain Riverboat. But we so that was uh, the mock-up plan. When we were eating dinner, I was like, okay, we, we only got like six more rides. We just got to get through these freaking rides and call it a day. Seems like a foolproof plan, right? Well, yeah, it, it should have been, but things happen. We have, okay, well, here's but anyways, the monorail. monorail. It didn't even really take that long to get on the monorail. This was already one that I was planning on doing in the afternoon anyways, because I knew that there's just not really much of a wait for this one. That's We're like getting out of the tunnel right. and it's just clogged. This right here, this is what I've been talking about. The fact that we waited so long for this to do this ride meant that there's a lot of people on this ride and it's gonna take a little bit longer to cycle the boats through, which just inadvertently increases the ride duration time because the load on load off time is longer. It really makes me reconsider like, is it better to do these rides when you can just walk on them because then you know that you aren't gonna have to worry about the ride duration getting any longer because there's not gonna be a pile up of boats. I think it still makes a lot of sense to save some of these rides for the afternoon. Just maybe not all of them, because then you're suffering in the afternoon like we were. I swear, the only thing keeping us motivated right now is Runaway Railway. Let me set the scene for you guys. It's May 10th, 2023. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opens like four months earlier. I had not seen a YouTube video of the ride. I was, I wanted to keep myself completely blind to like what to expect for the ride because I knew that the next time I was gonna go on it was when I did the speed run video. So this was like the one ride that I was genuinely just super excited to do. As Especially at a point like this, where we had just gone on Small World, we had gone on freaking Finding Nemo, we had gone on the monorail, like, we're going on rides that we're just genuinely, we're just going on them just to check it off a list. Like, we're not excited to go on these rides at all. But now we're going on the new ride, the ride that we haven't gone on at all. If we had not been going on every ride in one day, we probably would have done this one first because it was the one I was most excited for. Unlike and then the this happens. Five or six rides. I'm actually excited for this ride. Are you joking? It's temporarily closed. No! This, this was my breaking point with the speedrun. If there was any time where I was genuinely considering quitting the speedrun, like forfeiting, it was this time because it genuinely really pissed me off. With that though, I decided that instead we were going to go on the railroad, just the regular Disneyland railroad, because we still had to do that. It was the closest one to us. We were going to do the railroad after Runaway Railway anyways, so let's just go on the railroad now, and hopefully Mickey and Minnie's will be open by the time we get back to the Toontown Railroad. Yeah, that looks like a full queue. And yeah, but... full queue. More of a reason why we should not have gone on Indiana Jones when we were on it. We should have gone on the railroad, 
and then we wouldn't have had to wait through this crazy queue. We wouldn't have waited through a broken down Indiana Jones. So choice two. As we were on the train with only three more rides to go, we found out some very concerning information. Oh my God, you're joking. So on top of Runaway Railway, still not being open, just found out that Pirates is closed. Okay. We have three rides left. We have Runaway Railway, we have Pirates, and we have the Mark Twain Riverboat. Runaway Railway, it's broken down right now. It's still closed. It hadn't reopened at that point. And now Pirates just broke down. Like, Pirates. P tell me, tell me, when have you ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean break down? When have you ever seen that happen? That usually never happens. It made no sense to me. I was like, why the hell is Pirate saying it's temporarily closed? That makes no freaking sense. We only have one choice to do after after this ride. If neither of these rides reopen before we get off of this ride, the only choice we have to do is the Mark Twain Riverboat because it's literally the only ride that is open that we still have left to do. Even though we were on the railroad for like 50 minutes, Runaway Railway didn't reopen. Okay, Smart well time. actually, hey, this is perfect. The boat is showing up right now. Now we say- But we did, we did get pretty lucky because the boat literally- on this boat and we wait and so hope we got that good one of the two rides reopens oh shoot okay all right it's open so the fact that runaway railway did reopen like right when we got there it was a little annoying because i was like damn we were just there we could have just gone on it if both pirates and runaway railway had stayed closed by the time we had gotten off of the mark twain riverboat the run would have been over because the only two rides that we have left are broken down like the run's done well i guess the run isn't over okay. the run is not run's dead not over <laughs> But yeah, we got on the Mark Twain and we literally just sat in these seats at the front of it and we were just kind of like zombies the whole time because I was just like, let's just get through this freaking ride. And I was really hoping right about now that Pirates was going to reopen because yeah, Runaway Railway is open and that's great because we could just go on Runaway Railway after this. But also it's on the other side of the park at this point. Pirates is like right there. It's like right next to where the Mark Twain Riverboat is. Because I also knew that if it did reopen at that point, there would be like no one in line for it. We could just walk on it. So I was like praying. I'm refreshing the app. I was refreshing Pirates the app. Pirates is still, still not Pirates open. Pirates is still nope, closed. Still I was so open. bad. They're making us walk Because again, the it's Pirates of the Caribbean. That ride never closes down. Like, what the heck is going on? I was so upset. You know, the good thing about Runaway Railway being the last ride of the speedrun- And yeah, there's the spoiler. It was the last ride of the speedrun because Pirates was still closed. But honestly, for content purposes, I'm so glad that this was the last ride. It was genuinely the very definition of ending on a high note because we we actually had a really good time on this ride. Is that's that what I explained the last in the video. Ride of, so by the time the we got time. off, I was actually okay with Pirates still being closed. Okay, that, that's that's not entirely true. I was still pretty upset, but that's okay. <laughs> it's still closed. Okay, then I think we're about to end the run right here. This is it, once we exit the building. 12 hours, 14 minutes, and 20 seconds. Oh my god, we did it. We actually did it. Every currently op- 33 out of 33 rides. Now, I sound like I'm really upset and really critical of myself with this, but genuinely, when you get to the end of a challenge like this, all you're really thinking is like, holy crap, we just did that. Like, it's 7.44 p.m. at this point in the video. We started at 7.30 a.m. We were really just at this for 12 whole hours. Okay, that's about it. Goodbye to everyone. <laughs>